Hey, everybody. Welcome to LettermanRoad.com. This is Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast, brought to you by Byers Automotive. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. You call me Berm or whatever normally. That's Spencer Holbrook. You can call him Spencer or Chives or whatever you want to call him. Uh, Spencer, I, I know how much you love the Chives nickname, which is why you just gave that look uh, upon hearing it. So we'll make sure we, we, we avoid that the rest of this episode, at least, because uh, I want you to be happy. Nothing makes me happier than you being happy. That's Spencer. very nice of you. That's very nice. Thank of you. you. Thank you, uh, Spencer. Let's talk stuff because uh, there's stuff happening. As we've been alluding to, the the Buckeyes bash is finally here. It's approaching this weekend. Players are starting to come in from around the country. Uh, starting Friday, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where it, it would never happen in a year other than 2020. But uh, as schools around the country, like Oklahoma and LSU and Georgia and Clemson and everyone else, have made this sort of the thing to do. Uh, Ohio State commitments from the class of 2021, and uh, at this point, just one uh, big non-committed target are coming to town. What do you think the storyline of the Buckeyes bash is going to be? Uh, it's it's got to be the Tristan Lee visit. You know, if, if Tristan Lee comes in and has a good visit, is it Lee or Lay? Have we decided? When I say Lee, you can say Lay. It's got to be somewhere in the middle. Um, I, it's I before E, and there's no C before, so I mean... That's true. Is it Lay? So whatever. It's got to be sure. him, though. <laughs> the five-star offensive lineman from uh, yeah. Fairfax, Virginia. It, it's got to be Tristan. We'll just call him Tristan. Uh, yeah. It's, his visit is the most important part of this entire experiment because if he has a good visit, it moves Ohio State up. The momentum continues because I feel like there is real momentum right now. Um, I didn't know about the momentum when I predicted that that he would end up in the class. Now, Now I'm – I'm going to double down on that. I really think that this momentum is going to carry into November and December, and it's going to lead to a commitment uh, whenever that may come. But but it's got to be the most important thing. You know, it's an all hands on deck approach too. I imagine we talked to Jack Sawyer. He's going to say that that the defensive guys and offensive guys are all going to be recruiting, and it's not just going to be Kyle McCord and and some of those offensive guys. It's got to be everybody. And if they can get the job done, you know, it's going to be a huge hats off to the 2021 class because this is one of the rare. Uh, meetings where it could be the momentum changing only yeah. due to the players and not the coaches. Yeah, it's fascinating just to see how it unfolds because as we've looked at the last couple of weeks and, and the the build up to this, there have been all these other names that have been speculated about potentially coming to town. And now, you know, with the Buckeyes bash approaching and here in less than, than 24 hours, the possibility names have become like certainty names, either one way or the other. And the only certainty name that is definitely coming that's not committed at this point is Tristan Lee. And that means Derek Davis, who, you know, had said previously that if he could get the weekend schedule off because of the way that they're playing their games at, at Gateway High School, uh, that he might consider it. But instead, he's going to visit Georgia. Uh, and that would be an indicator um, of where that relationship is now at with him and the Buckeyes. Not that the relationship is bad, but. I think it's a clear sign uh, of what we've been hinting at for a while, that the Buckeyes uh, are no longer running in the top two of that recruitment with Penn State. I think it's a pretty good sign that the the Derek Davis decision, which will come on November the 7th, will end up going a different direction. Um, there was some discussion about JT Tuomalau and Emeka Abuka making the trip from, from Washington. Those two five stars are not going to make it. Uh, is there uh, there's another five star that had been – briefly talked about is coming to town and that's Rajon Davis, the linebacker committed to LSU. Uh, he had told a couple of the guys in the class, that he was really working on trying to be um, on campus this weekend with Ohio state. He's not going to make it because he couldn't arrange a flight. So, you know, I think that there's some people out there that are probably going to be like, Oh, dang it. This isn't even a big deal, but there's also, you know, changes. And we're, we're in a weird time in recruiting history there's players playing games that didn't expect to be playing. Kyle McCord is not going to make it. Uh, Reed Carrico is not going to make it because they're playing games on Saturday uh, when they thought that they would normally be playing on Friday. So they would have the rest of the weekend. So they're not coming. Um, in, in Jordan Hancock's not coming. But uh, there are still going to be 14 commitments in town. And, and that's pretty impressive for uh, these guys to arrange this on their own. And it's certainly – um, sets up Ohio State in a position to really focus, as you mentioned, on Tristan Lee. And, and it's something we've talked about here last week. And, like, 
uh, I'll, I'll continue to beat this dead horse, but if Tristan Lee wasn't interested in coming to Ohio State, he wouldn't be coming on this visit with his parent and his brother. Um, and so, you know, the question is, how does the city of Columbus um, impress the family? How, how insulated? And that's one of the things I think is most fascinating about Tristan's recruitment, because the top two schools in most people's minds are LSU and Oklahoma. And those are campuses that are sort of tucked away in their own little worlds, right? I mean, uh, that is, you don't you don't go to Norman, Oklahoma, unless you're going to Oklahoma. You don't go to Baton Rouge unless you're going to visit LSU. It's not the same situation with Columbus, which is obviously a major city. Um, and it has some of its own challenges when you're dealing with city life. And so you wonder for a kid from Fairfax, Virginia, how much interest is there in, in that city life versus that insulated, very um, isolated campus life of LSU in Oklahoma? Does that make any sense? Am I just rambling? I, sometimes I feel like I ramble. Well, there's there's two sides of that coin, though, because, you know, I don't want to look too far into, you know, the location of where Tristan Lee lives, but he lives 20 minutes, 30 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. So he's probably got the best of both worlds out there in Virginia where the the LSU Oklahoma feel is just enough like home and the Ohio State feel is just enough like home so I don't know if you can really draw any conclusions from that and I, I think that's that's important because we look for tea leaves anywhere we possibly yeah. can and and a lot of times it is comfortability in the city or on campus and you might just not have that as an aspect but but you've got to feel comfortable where you're at and if Columbus can make him feel comfortable this weekend I think it's a good sign for the Buckeyes moving forward. Yeah, that's one of the things where in a normal recruiting visit, you wouldn't be able to, you, you'd you get a better sense of exactly how isolated the bubble of Ohio State football is, uh, as opposed to a visit where you can't be on campus, where you can't be around the players, where you can't be at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. So you're more reliant on watching like G. Scott's Instagram videos or whatever to see exactly what it's like as a player, um, you know, Tristan did visit a year ago, so it's not like he's never been on campus. It's not like he's never had those experiences. As we, again, as we talked about last week, he's actually had more of those experiences at Ohio State than Travion Henderson or Tyleek Williams or uh, Denzel Burke or any of those guys. So he's in a, a little bit of a different position. But, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see where this is going to go. And I don't want to talk too much about it uh, from an outside, uneducated perspective. So we're going to take a quick break, let our uh, sponsors uh, help us out a little bit. And then Spencer and I are going to be back with Jack Sawyer, whose family is hosting this event this weekend to get a little bit of uh, taste of, of what Jack and, and his parents have planned for the weekend. So uh, we'll be right back with Jack Sawyer. Welcome back, everyone, to Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast brought to you by Letterman Row and our good friends at Flyers Automotive. Uh, I'm Jaron Birmingham. That's Spencer Holbrook. We're joined now by Jack Sawyer, Ohio State uh, 2021 defensive end commit, one of the country's top five recruits or something like that, uh, he, which is pretty good for a guy that decided to not play football this season. Uh, Jack, what's what's up, man? How are you? Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Jack, I'm just going to go right there. It's a big weekend for you and the class of 2021. Just not to really finish the class or anything, because obviously there's a handful of guys that you guys are still recruiting that aren't going to be in town. But as an attempt to really solidify the, the group with 14 guys expected, I think 14, um, you know, including guys like Denzel Burke and Travion Henderson and Tyleek Williams, people that have never even been to Columbus. What is your um, job, I guess, as the ambassador this weekend, as the, the quote unquote host for this weekend? Uh, you know, I think that, you know, the main purpose of this weekend is get get all the guys, you know, up here and kind of keep building that chemistry. You know, if we haven't seen each other like we usually have, uh, you know, and the, these periods would be great for us to get on campus and see each other, uh, you know, in a year that there wasn't a pandemic happening. So I think it's big for us all to, you know, get down here and hang out and uh, get a feel for each other and uh, just keep building this bond before we get in here in a couple months. Uh, Jack, the weird thing here is that, Okay, we know Tristan Lee is coming, uh, and his mom and, and and his brother Aiden. They probably, uh, because there's three of them in that family, aren't going to crash at your house. A number of guys are. Um, Derek Davis, we've talked about already on this episode, him, him probably not making it because he might be going to Georgia, but there's still a chance he could just pop into town, I guess. 
Yeah. That's one of the benefits of, of being close to home if he decides to not travel to Georgia for weather's sake or whatever. Um, Rajon Davis, the linebacker from LSU, that you guys are, are continuing to recruit, even though he's been solidly committed to LSU for a year. What is this uncertainty like? What does it feel like to be like, hey, we don't know. We're just going to be here. You're welcome if you want to. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Just like you said, you know, we're, we're welcome. You know, if anyone wants to pop into our house you now uh, later in the day, you know, my parents said uh, everything's OK. Everything's welcome. So I uh, just kind of to kind of see how it goes. You know what I mean? So all of us are going to all obviously be together and go watch the game somewhere. I'm, I'm assuming, you know, somewhere to eat. And, um, you know, if they want to come join us there, too, they're more than welcome to hang out, come hang out with us and watch the game. So uh, like you said, though, it's crazy, though, you know, come to my own house. You don't know who's all. Who's all going to show? Who's going to text me last minute and say, hey, I'm in Columbus. Can I come over? All that stuff. So, uh, you know, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, I think it's going to be a good weekend. Do you uh, Jack, have oh, – go ahead, Spencer. No, please, go ahead. Jack, when you when you get all these guys together, you got guys from the offensive side, guys from the defensive side. The main guy that you're trying to recruit into this class is on the offensive side. How do you take a joint approach to that? Because it seems like you guys are all going to be talking to Tristan and, and you know, hey, you should probably commit to Ohio State after this. but you know, you're not going to be exactly on the same side of the ball as him. So is it a joint approach? Are you going to let Travion and the offensive guys just handle that? Or how are you going to approach this all? Yeah, no, I think we've, we've definitely done a joint approach to recruiting kind of this whole time in this class, which has been a good thing for all of us because we're all pretty tight. Like I said, it's a, new, a unique class with, a, you know, how close we all are, offense and defense aside, we're commits. So, uh, you know, and, and right now we're kind of at a weird stage where, you know, we, we kind of filling out our class when we have a couple more spots left and, Really, we just want guys who want to be a part of this class now. So, really, we're not really pressing too hard. You know, we kind of just want to let him, you know, get the experience a little bit. And then, you know, honestly, it's on him because if he wants to be a part of the Buckeyes, the Buckeyes, then, you know, you know, we want him too. But if he doesn't, then, you know, we don't want him either. So, uh, it's kind of up to him and it's on them at this point. Right now, Jack, as you said, there's only a few spots left in this class. Uh, there's three real – main targets left that everyone knows we talk about all, all the time. It's Emeka Abuka, it's yep. Tristan Lee, it's JT Tumalau. Uh, Emeka and JT had discussed coming into town. Yeah. Um, they aren't going to make it. You actually, you know, said, told me a week ago, you actually finally had a conversation with JT. Yeah. Like, what is it? What is that conversation? Was it, are they disappointed they can't make it? Or are you disappointed they can't make it? What What is you guys, uh, I know you're not disappointed. You're not going to oh, shucks, you guys are jerks. but like, right. how does it, what, what's the approach then um, to moving forward? Because you guys, you know that Emeka eventually is going to visit Oklahoma and probably come back to see you. But is it just a matter of, hey, these doors are open and, and now that those relationships are built, you just have to keep plugging away? Yeah, you know, those guys, they know they're, they're wanted here in, in Columbus, you know, by us and, you know, by everyone as a whole. So, uh, you know, there's really not a ton of pressure, you know, just kind of, kind of just keep building the relationships over the phone like we have been. Um, you know, I think it's been going great overall. So uh, it sucks that we can't, you know, take a, official visits, would be, which would be huge for those guys. But, um, you know, I guess that we just got to keep doing what we're doing. And, you know, hopefully when it comes to signing day that uh, we've done enough to get those two dudes in. Well, well both, both JT and Emeka are probably not signing until February at this point. So maybe there's an opportunity for a January official for them. Right. With the all with the all American Bowl now canceled, with I mean, does is anything changing for you? Are you planning on getting to Ohio State in like December for bowl practices? Like, what what is what's going on with your plans to enroll? And uh, I guess we'll talk about that before we turn back to the Buckeyes crash. I think I might go down to uh, Orlando for the UA game, um, and then and then enroll right after. Uh, so probably I think I'm gonna enroll in Jan early January, real early, first week of January. Once I get back from that. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. I wasn't sure if you were going to try to get in the Brendan White plan. Brendan, when he, when he came to Ohio State in the offseason leading into the 2017 year, he actually enrolled or started practicing in the bowl practices. Oh, did so he? he would, so he was actually on campus during his Christmas break. He'd already graduated, but he was practicing in Ohio State's bowl practices, which really? you're allowed to do in some way. I don't know exactly what the loopholes well, are. but firm. Berm, you just gave You're Jack right. some new ideas. Uh oh, new Berm. Ideas yeah, he just gave me. I mean, I'm just saying. Ideas, I'm just man. saying. I'm just saying. It has happened before. Yeah. You might, you know, ask. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not telling you how to live your life. <laughs> no, hey, no. But you just give me good advice right there, so I might look into that. Jack, with this. Gonna ask Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. When you get all these guys together, uh, 
and, and you, some of them haven't been to Columbus. This is your home. You know it like the back of your hand. What's the place that you have to get them to, to, make, to you know, make them feel like they're at home in Columbus? That's a great question. You know, obviously, my first response that would be definitely get them to the shoe, uh, show them the shoe. But uh, so I think we're just going to go down there and, you know, like I said, find, we'll find a little joint to eat our, our food at during the game. And I think my dad's going to take us around town, uh, show us a few, few things, um, all led by us. And then, um, you know, go back to my house and kick it and have a good time, you know, girl out and whatnot. So, uh, but to, to answer your question, I'd definitely say the shoe. I mean, you got to show the dudes the stadium. So, so, but isn't that weird this weekend? Because you can't talk to the coaches while you're down there. They can't yeah. correspond with the staff. Yeah, we have, we can't have any contact at all. So, I mean, you know, so, so I know like Travion Henderson is coming into town on Friday morning. He told me, yep. Well, who else? I mean, let, let's just go down the list, okay? Who okay. is Jack Sawyer expecting? We know Kyle McCord is not coming. I know you're thrilled about that. Yep, super thrilled. So that means Stan Kyle. <laughs> so that means Marvin Harrison's not coming as well. Right. The the other guy in the class who you're mortal enemies with, Reed Carrico, is not coming. Yep. So who who exactly are you and, and parents Sawyer expecting to host? So we're expecting uh, all the Ohio boys except for Reed, and then we're getting Trey, Evan, and Ty he's, Lee. He's 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 not even a real Ohio boy, anyways. From Iron Team, it's basically exactly. West he's Virginia. West, West Virginia. That's what I told right. him too. So <laughs> everybody except for him, uh, Reed, her, uh, Trey, Evan, and Ty Lee are coming in Friday as well, and then Big Zen, who just committed, is coming up Saturday morning with his dad, and then there's a probably a couple more. I think Denzel might be coming. So. Those are is Sam, is Sam Hart coming? Yeah, yeah, Sam's coming too. Sam's coming Saturday, Saturday afternoon. And uh, I'm my my greatest curiosity here, just because we see all the names and they keep coming around in the defensive backfield. Is J.K. coming? Is Andre Turrentine coming? Is Jansen Dunn coming? Or who's all making their way up? Yeah, so Jansen's not going to be able to make it. J.K.'s not going to be able to make it either. Uh, I got to talk to Andre one more time. I think he's going to. I think he might be coming up. And uh, Jordan's not coming either, so that's from the secondary only about one. So BIA is almost, uh, you know, <laughs> being invi- BII, being invinci- invisible. Burn, Where are just, they? You right, missed yeah. it, Burn. Burn, you missed it. It's BIA is MIA. Oh, <laughs> yeah, come Christ. on, Burn. Man, <laughs> see, this is the thing. This is why we have this is why we have multiple people on the show, Jack, because I I can't I I sometimes hey. I miss. It's tough to be on your A game all the time. It is. It really is. It really is. Um, Let me ask you this one last question, and we'll let you get out of here. I'm sure you have to work out or something. Um, Yeah, something like that. Do you feel like when this weekend is over, I'm I'm just going to put Spencer on. Spencer says that uh, his bold prediction for the finality of the recruiting class is that Tristan Lee is going to sign with Ohio State. What makes this weekend a success in the effort to recruit Tristan Lee? What, what do you guys feel like you have to, to do? Because I've talked to him. I've talked to his mom. There's, there's like, they don't really know who you guys are as people. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, how, do you, how do you show that without being like, you know, over the top and disingenuous? I mean, that's exactly, you know, I think you hit it right on the button. I'm not going to be over the top. I'm just going to, you know, meet him, you know, be cool. And uh, hopefully meet his, his mom and his brother as well. And, uh, just kind of just, you know, let them know who we are, you know, as people, like you said, uh, who we are as a class, you know, a tight knit class that are, you know, we're all, you know, good friends already. And we still haven't even met each other, some of us. So uh, hopefully he gets a feel for how close the brotherhood we already have is, you know, before we even step on campus. And, you know, hopefully he realizes he should be a part of that. Uh, you know, I don't think any of us are going to be over the top with them. Uh, we're just going to, you know, we're just trying to have a good time this weekend, uh, enjoy ourselves. And, you know, hopefully he realizes that this is the part of the class he wants to be a part of. Are you telling him to bring his cleats? <laughs> no, if he wants to bring his cleats, he can bring them. Uh, I know I got a big front yard in, my, in the front of my house, so uh, get a little field work in. I mean, if if you, I'm sure Evan or, or Trey could, you know, play wildcat quarterback, and you guys can. Oh uh, yeah, we we could for sure get a game, of, uh, you know, pass out there or something. Or, I, I can see it right now. It's you and Mike Hall lined up uh, with you, Mike Hall and Tyleek lined up against Sam, uh, uh, Ben. And and Zen and then Tristan let Tristan play all time quarterback. See how he you know. <laughs> right. You gotta you gotta really make him feel like the star, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Give him the ball every time, let him do what he wants. All right. But no, do you I have just, uh, do you have is it like are you telling everyone to bring their own TVs, their own Xboxes? I mean, what do you guys what's the plan for Saturday night? Because obviously 
Ohio State game's on at noon. You're going to watch that in a restaurant yep. somewhere around to, uh, uh, Columbus. And then you said you're growing out, but it's going to be like 45 degrees on Saturday. I, uh, you might be aware of that. It's going to be a little yeah, chilly. Yeah, I, I, told, I told a couple of the dudes who are from North Carolina, you know, brand sweatshirt if you have one, uh, it's going to get a little chilly. So we're probably going to just grill out, hang out, play some Xbox, uh, kick it, uh, have a good time. Spike ball, you ever played spike ball before? We've got a couple of those uh, uh, I mean, I've seen it. Um, you may you may not be uh, as an old as an older fella, Jack. I, I don't move hey, like I used to. So. It's perfect. It's perfect for you, man. It's it's a oh. perfect cookout type. Old per- it's an old fat guy game. Type game. It's perfect for you. I'm telling you, Fantastic. you got to play. It. Well, all right. Well, I'll, I'll be over Saturday after the game, and uh, all right, we'll cool. see what we can do. So, all awesome. right, Jack Sawyer, thanks for taking the time to uh, stop in with us, Spencer, and I'll be right back, everyone. Uh, so we're going to send a little commercial love or advertisement. Did you say advertisement or ad- advertisement? Why did I say advertisement? <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, Jack, man. thanks, man. We'll talk to you later. Yep. All right. See you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Have a good one. See ya. Welcome back yet again, everyone, to Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast brought to you by Letterman and our friends at Byers Auto. I want to thank Jack Sawyer for stopping in and uh, chatting with us a little bit about the weekend. I apologize for the advertisements. Things get a little weird. Um, Spencer, when you hear a guy like Jack talking about this plan, um, and, and again, people are going to read into who all shows up and who doesn't as though it is entirely important, but it's most important to realize that every one of these kids who's coming has to do it on their own dime and, and not everyone's in the same position. Aside from the fact that not everyone like Kyle McCord and Marvin Harrison, they play a game so they can't make it. Um, do you feel more confident or less confident about your prediction, R.E. Tristan Lee? I, my prediction has not changed, and and the thing about it is, right. when you hear when you hear Jack talk about how he's just going to be genuine, uh, he's going to make sure none of the guys are over the top. It's going to be a you know a typical Ohio State approach to a recruiting battle, um, but just coming from the players and not the coaches. You know, the coaches when they get these guys on campus, they're just real with them. You know, Ryan Day's real with them. Uh, you know, Greg's the draw would would lay out the plan, and instead of that the real approach that you always write about with these coaches and with the coaching staff, you're going to get that from the players. These players yeah. are a very tight knit group. They've already bought into the brotherhood before they even get on campus and do the mat drills and, and get broken by Mickey Marotti. So, you know, these guys already know what they're talking about. They know what to do when they're making this pitch and they know not to be over the top. And I think that's going to, that's going to pay off big time when, when they get Tristan Lee on campus, because they can just say, Hey, this is the plan that we see for you as a class. We want you in this class. If you want to come, go ahead. If you don't, we're not going to be mad at you. But we don't, if you don't want to be here, we don't want you either. And, and I want to be clear. This is the funny thing about recruiting and, and the way this thing all unfolds. So on Thursday morning, I had written about Derek Davis not coming to the, to the bash. And we talked about it a little bit on this show. And obviously, Jack just got off the show. But as soon as we get done, he sends me a text message and saying, P.S., I was just told right now Derek is coming to Columbus this weekend. So things just are constantly changing. So, like, I mean, literally a minute after getting off the, the call, he says, uh, actually, I think he we're, feel pretty confident that he is coming. So we'll see if that happens. And same thing here. And again, I wrote on Thursday morning, like, if Derek goes to Georgia or, or it doesn't come to Ohio State, it, it's pretty much a nail in that coffin. Um, if he ends up making the way to Ohio State, then at least there's a little opening. And, and for a recruitment like Derek Davis, who Ohio State's recruited him for three years, I mean, this is a kid that they really, really like and they really, really want in the class and have for years. They just don't know that he's interested in being in the, a seventh defensive back. Um, at least we can say if he does show up, like apparently now Jack Sawyer is expecting, that if he does make it, there is at least still that glimmer of hope that maybe Derek's interest in Ohio State is genuine enough based on the relationships that he's had and has with them that it's worth coming in for. Um, and and who knows, maybe that relationship, uh, that recruitment is not as dead in the water as it appeared to be Thursday morning. You almost wonder with Derek Davis's recruitment if you know he really wants to be a part of the class, but he wanted to make sure 100%. And by the time it got full, He's now looking back to, you know, I still can go here. It's just pretty full. You know, it's almost like he wants to be there, but he's found so many reasons not to because of yeah. how many defensive backs they have in the class. And and I do feel for the kid. I mean, Ohio State's yeah. recruited him for a long time. And right. they can't just sit back and wait all the time for him because they've got other guys that want to commit as well. But at the same time, you know, he he wants to play. 
And so yeah. this is not one of those things where we talked about it before. A guy is not afraid of competition. It's just the reality of there can only be four defensive backs on the field at once. And in one class, you've already got six of them. So, I mean, it, yeah, it's the year of recycled comments. And I understand that. And I'm going to say this again. These kids from Pittsburgh are very generally uh, homebodies. They want to stay close to home. And I, I know that there's interest from Derek Davis and his family in Georgia, in Clemson, in LSU. But this recruitment for the last year has been Ohio State or Penn State. And if you look at what has happened to Penn State's recruiting class this cycle, especially inside the state of Pennsylvania, they are struggling. And I don't know if maybe in a normal year, if things were like all the rest of the best players in Pennsylvania were going to Penn State, maybe he would have already committed there. His former high school coach is, a, is an assistant coach there. There's a lot of reasons. You know, they, they certainly don't have six defensive backs committed, even though they do have – the same number of safeties committed Ohio State does. It's just, I, I this is one of the reasons why I oftentimes am, am reluctant to like put anything in a f finality type uh, context when it comes to a recruitment because the relationship that Derek Davis has had with Ohio State for the last three years is as good as the relationship he's had with any other staff. And as Spencer said, I think this is a situation where this kid has kind of always wanted to be at Ohio State, but there's a lot of valid arguments against why it might not be the best situation for him right now. And the majority of that argument is there's six defensive backs in this class. So the question is, is Derek able to or willing to overlook that um, in order to be at the place where he feels like he can be developed the best, where he can be closest to home and, and, and have the best opportunity to win a national championship. And I think that, you know, those are the arguments and why a kid who thought he might have been committed six months ago uh, is still debating what he's doing. Um, and even up until the day before a potential trip to Georgia or Ohio State or anywhere else, the, the news keeps changing. So um, for those of you who sometimes are a lament my appearance of uh, checking my phone during a video, that's sometimes what happens. You see, there's messages that I'm receiving most of the day. And uh, so that's why occasionally I have to see what it's about, because in this instance, you know, we're breaking some uh, some newsy type stuff. The Adam Schefter of Ohio State recruiting coverage. I, I don't you know, I, I understand that people get frustrated when I check the phone, but, you know, I'm checking the phone because I'm having these conversations with people. Oh, you so. see it all the time on on TV, Berm. you know, Shefty's <laughs> sitting there on the set and all of a sudden you get the text. It's like, wait a second, there's breaking news that just happens so, sometimes. So that's what's happening now. And, and uh Again, that is the state of recruiting, and it's the state of recruiting in 2020, especially. Things change uh, very quickly. I'm now expecting Derek Davis to make it to the Buckeyes bash. So take what I wrote in this morning's, the Thursday morning's uh, Doubting the Eyes and pretty much uh, throw it out the window because if he's not going to visit Georgia and is instead coming to Ohio State, then there is at least a heartbeat uh, in the Buckeyes' pursuit of, of Derek Davis. I want to wrap this up, Spencer, because that – uh, breaking news, Derek, sort of changed everything we were going to talk about. So I do want to just finish this episode talking about uh, 2022 offensive lineman Blake Miller, who released his top five schools this week. Ohio State, Michigan, Clemson, Florida, Auburn uh, makes a cut for the Strongsville, Ohio uh, offensive tackle. I still feel like this is going to be a fight that Ohio State is going to be in for Blake. Um, but as this extended dead period continues, the three schools that he's visited, which is Ohio State, Clemson, and Michigan, will continue to push out ahead of the other schools of interest like Florida and Auburn. Um, I, you know, I, there's, I can't shake this feeling that Blake is lo looking at his recruitment in a much different way than a lot of in-state kids, and this one could be like a potential – upset down the road. And I know I'm alone. And when I say that, and people often think that I'm a negative guy about, for, you know, outcomes, but it just seems like if, if, the, if, if a decision was easy to make for him, it would have been made already. Am I wrong? No, I don't think you're wrong. I think, I mean, he's been really offered by Ohio state for eight months. I mean, it, it, the opportunity to commit in the last eight months in the school that he's been to a handful of times, you'd think that if he was like, leaning in that direction at this point that it would already have happened because there's no reason for it not to have if he was sold on the on the concept yeah and that that uh clemson paul logo on that top five just just looks a little suspicious for 
I don't know. But it, it's not easy. And Clemson did a really good job. They got him on campus uh, very early in his recruitment. They've been recruiting him very aggressively. Michigan's done the same thing. Uh, one of his mentors is J.D. Duplain, who's from Strongsville, who uh, decided to go to Michigan State instead of Ohio State a few years ago. So it's not like he's a guy that has a – I mean, even though he grew up a Buckeyes fan and his family's all Buckeyes fans, you know, uh, there are a lot of kids out there in the, in the year 2020 that are looking at recruitment in a different way. And it's about uh, – it's not always about chasing that dream that the average fan um, would. And, and I'm not saying he's not going to end up at Ohio State. I think it's still – if I was putting a percentage on it, I'd still say 60%, 75% to Ohio State. But when you're talking about an in-state offensive line target who had an offer six months before his junior season, generally those odds are like 100%. So it, it's just a little uh, unsettled. One thing I will say about this recruitment, though, Berm, uh, Ohio State has had some success on the interior of the offensive line in the past. And and uh, this NFL draft is going to be a major, major recruiting win for Ohio State when Josh Myers and Wyatt Davis both and probably uh, Thayer Munford both go pretty high in the draft because I think Thayer's yeah. going to have a good season. And then you go to Harry Miller, who's also going to go high in the draft in 20 uh, prediction, 2022 draft is probably going to go relatively high in the draft. And then the pipeline just continues like all of these offensive linemen that are starting right now are going to be NFL draft picks and they're going to be probably pretty priority NFL draft picks. Yeah. The recruiting pipeline at Ohio state, as far as the offensive line goes has always been strong, I would say, but it's about to get even stronger. And so I think this recruitment driving on is not a great sign for Ohio state, but at the end of the day, I think Ohio state's going to present, going to be able to present a plan for him and say, Hey, listen, you can stay in state and we'll get you exactly where you want to go. So I think, and, I think there is yeah. and, and that's the, like, I think Spencer, like, because 20, the, the 2021 recruiting class, we saw so many guys commit earlier than normal because of the pandemic. We've seen a handful of guys in 22 make some, some early moves that maybe it feels like it's dragging on because he's an Ohio kid and it seems like a no brainer, but you know, the pandemic has really put these kids in a, in a weird spot and, and he hasn't been able to visit all the places he wants to visit. And so you just have to build the relationship and you have to hope that uh, with Greg Studuara's uh, success in developing players, um, that the lure of playing at your in-state school, um, the place you dreamt of being your whole life is, is enough to overcome um, the really tempting opportunity to play at Clemson right now. And, and for a kid from Strongsville, Clemson, again, is a, is a nice place to go hide away. I mean, it, it's a, it's a place where, you know, you're going to get developed and win, win every game you play until the last one of the year. Um, and then we'll have the cases you even win that one. So uh, it, it's certainly going to be uh, interesting to watch. And I, I don't know, again, I don't mean to sound negative about it, but I think it's important to be realistic that, um, you know, with Ohio state's, recruiting on the offensive line with Tegra Toshibola already committed in 2022 with the real push for Keontae Goodwin, who will be on next Monday's Bermanology. Um, you know, I think that there's a, a handful of uh, guys that you could see move around. And uh, I don't know after what's going to be a small offensive line class in 2021 with probably only uh, the three commitments that they have, they obviously the effort to, to land Tristan Lee is out there. So that could change things too. But um, it's hard when you're talking to a kid from um, Ohio, even if he has offers from places like Clemson and Alabama and Ohio State and Georgia and LSU and all these other schools. It's it's not easy anymore to convince a kid, hey, you're going to be one of six in this class. Join the class because you, this is where you dreamt of being like that has to be a, a, a better argument um, than just this was your home school. But when you say you're going to be one of six offensive linemen in this class. And I think that the 22 class could end up in that five or six number, um, depending on what happens with Tristan Lee. Things get, things get a little murkier. That's all I'm saying. Don't shoot the messenger. Yeah. I mean, when you take six in 2020, you got to take just a few in 2021 and then you got to restock that, that cupboard in 2022. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Buckeyes play this because uh, I've talked about this. I'm a firm believer that you could build an entire offensive line class out of the state of Ohio in 2022. I think it's strong enough that you could really have three or f at least three guys, maybe four or five that are solid enough to actually earn playing time at Ohio state um, and be Ohio state. Um, 
you know, ready guy. It's not ready right away, but Ohio State could build this class right in state. Now, if whether they do that or not remains to be seen. Ohio State always right. has a plan, though. Ohio State always has between, a plan. Between, so. Tish, between Tisha Bola and Blake Miller and Emil Wagner and Ryan Bear, um, there's four guys right there that are – uh, very, you know, very high Big Ten caliber offensive lineman, uh, offensive line prospects. So they they could definitely um, do that. So anyway, there's going to be a lot more stuff to talk uh, in the next couple of weeks. And uh, I'm glad as football comes back around, we will see more recruiting type news. That it, I know it's been a handful of slow months, everyone, and we appreciate you bearing with us and uh, allowing us to talk stuff at you and with you. Um, that's Spencer Holbrook. I'm Jeremy Birmingham. We're going to Keep diving into the Buckeyes bash in the next few days and, and see what we can shake out of it. So thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, we will be back next week on Talking Stuff, the Ohio State Recruiting Podcast, brought to you by Letterman Row and Byers Auto. If you're looking for an auto, go to buyersauto.com. If you're looking for stuff, come here and talk to me and Spencer. See ya.